And actually, God is doing the shifting of his church. He wants to change us. He wants to change the church and move us from apathy, move us from carelessness, laziness, move us from those things. I asked the church, uh, the group yesterday, I said, you know, when I built this building, there's nowhere my name's on it. It won't be when I'm dead. I built this church for a generation that hadn't even been born yet. I built this church so that there would be a place on top of a hill where people could come and generations and generations of kids and parents could come and always find a place where they could worship the living God. Because in 1743, when Robert Strawbridge uh, lived on this property and held prayer meetings, uh, and we came in the 1980s uh, and secured this property for the glory of God, we've established a continuation uh, of what God wanted to do for now hundreds and hundreds of generations, the prayers of God and the power of God are still oozing out of this house uh, and off of this hill because God put his foot there and said, where I've been, I'll come again. And then in a hundred years from now, I want generations of kids that land their little helicopter cars outside and come in their little uh, space suits or whatever they wear and, and tele beam themselves in here. I want them to come and I know that one thing that'll be true, uh, it might look technologically different, it might sound different, uh, but one thing that will be the same uh, is the Shekinah, the blue flame of God, uh, the glory of God uh, will come down and light into the hearts of men and women and say, I am God. I am the ancient of days. I've always been God and I'll be God after you're gone. Hallelujah. We have to serve a generational God. One clear picture of this type of change and transition is a Bible story of Joshua here. I'll read it to you in a minute. And the Israelites were told uh, that Moses was dead and said, get up, rise, and you gotta cross over Jordan. And the crossing of Jordan was such a big deal because they were entering into what their forefathers had died for, a dream, uh, uh, and, and now God's promise to them was right at hand. See, they, they, when they came out of Egypt, when they came out of Egypt, there was a promise, and the promise was when they came out of Egypt that they were gonna come into a land that flowed with milk and honey. It was gonna be a promised land. But because their hard-heartedness, listen to me, because of their hard-heartedness uh, and their stiff-neckedness, uh, they went through the desert for 40 years. That was an 11-mile journey. And they went for those 40 years because they had turned away from God. They had denied God. Even in the thing that God had done, he delivered them and they still wanted to go back to Egypt. And here they were now standing at another prefaces, another, another moment of change, another transition, another time for something to break loose and change. How many of you hear God takes this church and he brings us to crossings all the time. He brings us to the cross of Jesus. He brings us to the crossing of opportunities to step from one time into another time. And we need to know that that's where we're at today. As the nation is shifting, so must the church understand that God is shifting the church to embrace the shift that he's bringing in the world. And after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, and, and, and saying, uh, Moses, Moses' assistant, saying this, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you have to understand something. Transition means the death of something. And you can't have the embracing of something unless there's the dying of something. If you're here today and you wanna serve God, then you gotta die. If you die to yourself, you'll serve God. If you want God to do a miracle for you, then you gotta die to that thing that you're holding on to. If you want God to financially bless you, then you gotta die to the security blanket of your own trust uh, and trust God. If you lose something, you'll gain something. But if you hold on to something, you will lose something. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. There's always a rise and get up and go. How many of you know, saints, it's not enough to just get up. We gotta go. 
We gotta go into a new thing. We gotta step, there's a, there's a walk involved in this. There's a walk involved in you and I believing for a new day in God. If you're gonna walk with the Lord, you gotta literally walk with the Lord. You gotta pray, you gotta read the word, you gotta fast, you gotta, you gotta talk to God, you gotta exercise faith, you gotta speak faith. I'm around people constantly. They never speak faith. Everything out of their mouth is negative, doubtful. They always uh, cannot believe that God can. God was telling them something. You're getting ready to cross over and God wants you to hear this in the prophetic. God says, when you're crossing over into a new day, you need to know that I'm still God. I'm going to be there, but I'm going to do things in a different way. And God uh, was teaching these young Israelites that you're no longer gonna have manna fall out of the sky. You're no longer going to have uh, uh, quail that drops out of the sky, but I'm still gonna be God, uh, but I'm gonna show you a new way that you're gonna prosper. And many times we are hung up in the old thing that God did 20 years ago and we can't embrace what he wants to do right now. You see, because we don't live the current life with Jesus, we think what happened with our mother 20 years ago and that relationship is what we're gonna live on. I'm sorry and I don't wanna disappoint you, but your relationship with God today is how you're going to live for tomorrow, not the way you lived 10 years ago, five years ago. You better have a living encounter with a living God today or you're gonna find yourself God went right and you went left. God is calling us to initiate a new endeavor in reaching out to our cities, our cultures, our nation. Common sense would tell us to simply hold the fort until things change financially. But God's season seldom coincides neatly with our seasons and our perspectives. How many of you hear that? How many of you know the common sense is hold on? No, common sense is not gonna work in this day, saints. Common sense is not gonna work in this day. We need to be creatures who learn how to hear God in this change. How many of you know you're gonna go, how how many think it would have been a strange thing to go outside with your cup? Now don't you think those Israelites had that as a habit? Don't you think they went over to the tent and said to little Johnny, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, go over and... uh, Get that stuff this morning, get your pot, go out there and hold it up. It's gonna fall when it does, just collect it up, son, bring it in. Comes back an hour later, says, I ain't got nothing. What? Where the quail? Where's the manna? God said, I changed the method of how I'm gonna bless you. Verse eight said, If you will keep my law, you will make your way prosperous. Oh, you mean I have something to do with it? Yes, God said, I'm tired of babysitting you. I'm tired of spoon feeding you with manna. I'm gonna cause you now to have to find that I'm God through the labor of your commitment. Some of you that have no prayer life are gonna realize what a struggle it is to live because you're gonna find out that the only way is in this new transition is a person who knows how to pray and trust God and knows how to believe God. You're gonna be at the right place at the right time for God to supply your need. Now, show you how clear this change is. Here's where the church has been. Got the same thing, but a slow results. And God is about to anoint this generation with an acceleration of wisdom and insight and anointing to do what the church has done for all these years, but they're gonna do it with an acceleration that we've never seen before. 